but uh, how was your uh, week or weekend or it, whatever? It was, it was it was good. It was uneventful. I didn't do anything again other than finally sign up for CLZ. Oh, I thought you were going to say for AARP because I just got my card in the mail the other day. But okay. Well, okay. On that, I'm getting an email every other day from AARP. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if like you signed me up along. No, with- I didn't. I promise. No, I know. I just figured something happened. Something I used my email for a while back, like because I had a my my email clean pretty much, and then all of a sudden stuff started rolling in on the email. So whatever I had to use my email for over the last like couple of months, it finally got sold. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm getting like j- like junk email, but I ended up doing that i signed up for clz and then i maybe watch something on youtube <laughs> so those are the two things that i did what do you mean you watch something on youtube that was kind of vague no it wasn't fake i figured you would know what it was it was a podcast oh okay uh okay 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 um so clz mm-hmm. um you got it on your you got it on your phone you're adding stuff yep how far along are you? What are you doing? Um, okay, because I just did it recently. I uh, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna add stuff on my phone. Um, I have it on my tablet too. I didn't do the like. I guess I did the the bare bones one. Well, first of all, I have a seven day sign up. I, I don't have to pay for anything. You know what I mean? Right. So if I don't like it, I can get out. I so I was like, okay, let me just do a box. What box do I want to do? And I'm like, what box is sitting right next to my computer? Um, my Sandman box. That seems, you know, something good to start with. So I did that, and it was really simple because yeah. even at this time, they're all direct. Uh, they're new. They're not newsstand editions. They're like from comic com- shops. So sure. I don't have any. Uh, what do you call it to use uh, barcodes? So right. it was just boom. I went to Sandman. I was like, all right, one to seventy-five. I had to see because I have variant covers. Blah blah blah. I went through the. I went through it. It took me to do a box of like a. I'm gonna say 150. I don't know exactly 150 Sandman comics. It took me a little under an hour to do it, but that's because I was making sure I got all the variants and stuff like that. And I had signed books like uh, with a certificate of authenticity. Like I was a Sandman guy, like you know always. So I did that, and then later on I did my Justice League International boxes because they were they're down here near near me so i was like so i did three boxes just to get it done Mm -hmm. to try it out and now it's like if i want to do it i have to tear through i don't know i want to say i have 80 short boxes i have to go through okay so it's like it's going to be a slow process but looking at it it's different than stash my comics which was much more simple which i like this has too many choices and choices overwhelm me so it's like okay well basically now it's just do the box uh chronicle the box name the box and then put a sticky note like a uh uh you know, like a sticky tab on it with that. That's the name of this box. Mm-hmm. So whenever I go to put them in whatever order, I can change the names. You know what I mean? So, right. I, I like it. It's fun. I, I I played around with it and saw that you can go by like with the information of the books that you have. You can you can be like, oh, if I always want to look up a creator, I can look up a creator and go find everything I own that they have. And I'm like, okay, this is very good for 14 bucks. Over the course of a year, I went to if I'm going to pay it, I'll take the 14. The only thing I don't like about it is you have to hook up a payment plan, a payment whatever option. Oh uh, yeah, payment method, sure. To but not to. I would have liked it if I just hooked it to CLZ, but now it's hooked to my Google Play Store, and I don't. Uh, like is that the way you did it, or? Yeah, well, I have stuff, you know, whether it be like my monthly dollar to marvel puzzle quest or gotcha. whenever we do stuff for pokemon go i already have it set up you know that i have payment stuff set up through my google play anyway right i got you i just uh and i had to figure out what sync was but i, I don't like having because i'm afraid that like i'll be playing my uh my candy crush because i'm a super candy crush guy that right. if i bump a button it will take out of my paypal you know what i mean like, because a lot of times they have buttons set up where it's like, oh, if you want to keep playing, two ninety nine, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, I got to miss those. But with, so, no, with no payment option, it don't matter. If I bump it, it goes, you have to add a payment option. You know what I mean? So you could set it up um, through your Google Play 
that any time you do something that you have to manually put the password in every time. Okay, that's good. Because I, you know, when things were more shared around here, I had to have it set up on the password thing. And then there was time about a year or so ago where um, my wife still had Ace's Pokemon Go on her phone. She did not have the password thing set up, and our little niece was playing on Pokemon Go and actually and accidentally dropped twenty five dollars on Pokemon Go. So did you take it out of her hide? Yes. Good. Um, but it was one of those things where, you know, because it's all connected to the same Google account, I see the little girl on the phone. I get an email that says you just spent twenty five dollars on Pokemon Go, and I'm like, no, I didn't. And then I look over, I see her on the phone, and I'm like, give me the phone. You give it a phone right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but these things happen; it's no big deal. Um, but and I'm like, I, and I said to my wife, I'm like, you need to put it on there if there's other people handling your phone. That any time that they go to make a purchase, they have to put the password in. Like even my kid uh, has a thing that if he tries to go to it, he has to because it's a kid's account. He, it sends a message to me that he's trying to buy something. And I could block it or allow it or whatever. Right. So if he's going to do anything, he'd be like, Dad, can I get this? Yes. Yeah. Do it in front of me kind of a deal. You know what I mean? Right. We'll get this right out of the way. But yeah, if you, with you having payment stuff connected to your Google Play, you may want to put that password thing on there that you have to do a password every time that you make a purchase. Right. Um, so that's in like go to my Google Play store. Okay, that's I'll I'll find it, but I just it's one of those I didn't know if I had to do that on CL. Yeah, I got you know. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna walk you through that one. You could no, that we don't need to yourself. be fighting on here. So no. Um, but you mentioned that you had your JLI box up there. Yep. And I I was talking to a mutual friend of ours, um, and I'm like I go well, you know, we were talking about um, we were talking about the uh, interview that I did with my friend Ian. For the At Odds Patreon that just came out this past week. Right. Huge hit, I'm hearing. That's what I hear. Um, uh, you know, I'm, you know, that's what I hear. Um, <laughs> it was pushed big on Porch Talk this week. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. good. I'm glad. The the listenership of that. <laughs> the uh, far-reachingness of it. But I was talking to a friend of mine who was just like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I think Ian listens to less podcasts than Todd does. Right. And my friend said, that's impossible. And I said, not after this week, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Because the first episode of Salty Keith, a.k.a. Keith Giffen's podcast, I'm Not Dead Yet, came out this past week. Now, I want to throw this out here um, just in case there's been any misconstruedness, okay? Mm-hmm. Especially on the main show, we talk about the Rob quite a bit, and we talk about him a little bit this week. Right. I want to be as clear as possible. We're not fans of the Rob. I'm a Rob understander, right? Mm-hmm. Not a fan of the Rob. We love Salty Keith. Salty Keith is awesome. I'll buy any project that Salty Keith does, you know? Yep, yep. Um, you know, sight and scene, support anything he does. You know, he has gotten a lifetime pass from the work that he did on Vexed, but... (laughs) He gets the Todd nod for life. Right. But, again, like, we've told the story before, but it bears repeating here. You know, when we met Salty Keith, what was that convention? Was that, like, 98 or 99? I think so, yeah. Okay. So, like, Keith was, like, in a down period of his career, you know? Um, Yeah. Vex had just gotten canceled. It was before he came back and did like Drax, and then that led into the Annihilation stuff, right? Marvel. And I, that and I'll never forget. It was either at this convention or shortly after this convention that he was doing an adaptation of the Bible for Penthouse Comics. Well, you know, I've said this. I've said this. Pen, I don't know if you know this. Penthouse Comics had money. Yes. And you know Mark Schultz, who lives around here. Good friend of mine, name drop, and you can pick it up off the ground when we were done. Oh, um, my goodness. Just don't go get a picture with him. Right. He, uh, Mark, Mark Schultz, w- w- is a nice guy. He's like, I didn't want to draw any nudity or anything for Penthouse. 
And they said, will you at least do a cover for us? He's like, all right. Not that he didn't want to do nudity, uh, but he didn't want to do risque sex stuff. You know what I mean? He didn't, like, want, to do a, uh, he didn't want to do a close-up of someone's butthole. Right. So they were like, and he told this story at the shop. He goes, he goes, um, he goes, well, I'll think about it. And they said, well, how much are you paying? And he goes, and then they told me how much they're paying. And I said, I would pose for that amount of money. And I was like, okay. So he ended up doing one cover for Penthouse Comics. But So uh, what I'm saying is Penthouse Comics may not, may have been paying great. Right, but it wasn't the top of the heap. It or, wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't something from the big two, you know? So yep, yep. we were there like, oh, we got to meet Salty Keith. We got our picture taken with him. And you had just introduced me to JLI, and I had picked up, like, the first seven or the first whatever it is, and I had him sign them. We got our picture taken with him, and he was just miserable, right? And mm-hmm. understandably so. But to be, to be fair, I've never seen Salty Keith smile in any picture I've no. ever seen him in. Even when he was at Baltimore and he did the panel with J.M. DeMatties and uh, notable that, deadline maker Kevin McGuire. I was going to say that other guy. Yeah. Um, they were like balls of energy and this, that, the other thing. And Keith was just like, eh, eh, yeah. nonplussed. All the it's a it's a it's a convention it's a it's a room at the convention hall filled with people to talk to me about a book that I did thirty years ago. Yeah. Eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> Right. Um, that being said, as you describe him, I think somebody else is running his social media. Okay. So, um, we're not going to get too far into this because God forbid. Right. Um, so they had init- they're using Spreaker as the hosting site, right? Mm-hmm. But they also have it up on YouTube. When you go to the Spreaker site for the Keith Giffen show... There's another person's name there, okay? Mm-hmm. And that other person had, and I said had, a podcast where they did, um, I, I think the, uh, they like, they stopped doing a podcast, like, maybe say, like, November, and then they just recently brought it back within the last, like, month, okay? Okay. And it's specifically about soccer, Ooh, that sounds like somebody who might have an accent. Okay, well, so when I go and I search that person's name, they're from the South, Mm -hmm. and they're also involved in mortgages. Oh, okay. And he's also Keith's uh, son-in-law. Okay, this is all starting to make sense. So, it's a son-in-law from the South who's in mortgages... And he's getting his father-in-law to do a podcast? Mm-hmm. I've heard this story before. <laughs> uh, kind of, yeah. So uh, the first episode was just kind of like an introductory one. It was like a half hour long. Yeah, I watched it on YouTube just to see uh, Keith. And uh, I'm sure they'll get the uh, microphone situation uh, figured out here eventually, right? I was wondering if you were going to bring up the oh, sound issues. Come on. <laughs> But where I'm saying he's taking over the the social media, but I mean like the Facebook page and everything else. And the Instagram and yeah. Right. Because he's very boisterous on there. Oh, like I'm going to drop something later today with what I was talking about on the podcast. And if you have any questions, I'm like, that's not, that's not Keith. That's not Keith writing like that. He, He would write it like Oberon from Justice League International. So, um, but yeah, so. But I, I listened, like I said, even with the sound issues, and I'm kind of glad I watched the video of it. Yeah. Because I got to see him wipe his hands, like the wipe his hands thing, where it's like, and I'm done, and they wash their hands of me. And he just wipes his hand. He did that like 17 times through the podcast. <laughs> so, but. But the, the tease for this week's podcast, mm-hmm. um, it just, uh, where, where are we looking here on the Facebook, right? Yeah. Uh, it says, sounds a lot better, just need to sort the lighting out in the room, uh, but c- catch it tomorrow, Wednesday at noon. Now, granted, it didn't go up at noon, but I'm not going to hold them to that, you know? Right. Well, that was last week. They were they were ironing out the kinks, you know what I mean? That was the, the vade, maiden voyage. Mm-hmm. I was going to say the vaden voyage. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> But um, I, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I, you know, obviously being a Keith fan, it was very interesting to see him speak candidly. You know, yep. 
I will say, I don't think there was any technical difficulties halfway through the stories. I feel there was some editing. Okay. Was, um, when he was telling the monkey story, I think there was some hard R's before the, uh, before the cut. Okay. And then they're like, we need to fix this. And they were just like, oh, we're just going to go from here and then reiterate what the other guy said people in the mail room were. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, I get Because you. I've talked to, to Keith, like, and you have too. He does not have a filter. And I believe some stuff was said, like, we we can't. And I do believe that this son-in-law and with Keith, because like, it's not Keith's idea, it's trying to get him, like, whatever, you, his recognition now. You know what I mean? Um, and I hope it does work. Because I, 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 I do feel like if anybody's going to have a story of the territories and the independent days, kind of, of from creators, it's going to be him. And he's not going to be afraid to tell the stories. Exactly. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I look forward to it from here on. And I literally, like, whenever they ask for questions, my big question that I want to answer, and I thought about it, I thought it was going to be the Hex run. But do you remember when he wrote Suicide Squad? Yeah. Um, it was alongside um, JLI, right? No, no. That was uh, Ostrander who wrote that. I'm talking when he came back, like, later like i forget what it was like 2001 or whatever and he did suicide squad because the first issue of the suicide squad was the was uh the injustice league from his run clue master um big sir like all them and he pretty much killed them all off which ticked off um chuck dixon and scott Beatty because they were using clue master in batman at the time because she he was he was spoilers father right so they had to retcon that and bring him back but the team later was run by bulldozer from easy company he was like their oracle he was in a wheelchair and uh President Lex's guy who was in charge for something was Sergeant Rock. He had survived the the war and everything. And then at issue 12, the book just got canceled. The book ended with uh, them going to get Sergeant Rock, and they just found a rubber mask where he was, like, and he just disappeared. So there was speculation that he was the unknown soldier. And then Bulldozer, who was wheelchair ridden just gets up out of the wheelchair and goes well i have to leave while nobody's around and we never find out who bulldozer is and then we find out that sergeant rock and bulldozer were killed at the end of the world war ii and like this is all just left at in issue 12 and never touched on again and i'm like i want all this answered like but i don't know how to write that question that isn't a paragraph and a half <laughs> Um, well, you know, obviously they, they had the thread where there was a bunch of, sub, you know, things for submissions like, hey, what would you like to hear us talk about? You know, mm -hmm. and I threw in their trencher, you know, of course, I'd love to hear the story behind that. And I did hacks, like I said. Right. But there, if you go back through some of his other Facebook posts, you'll see that he had like just really like, quick hitters. Like I completely forgot that he had he did a Masters of the Universe book. Mm -hmm. um for dc and he was like yeah i wasn't familiar with the characters i tried to do my own thing with it and it was just a failure right you know so he's gonna be if you can get him to talk about something um like i feel as though he's going to be very honest in regards to it you know yep 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 it's just whether or not he'll remember it because as he was doing the stories like where i got into it and it was like i there wasn't a deadline i couldn't miss i was fucking around and then he gets to, he's like, oh, well, they let me come back. And he's like, and he's like, oh, and they, they had me doing backups on a book. And I'm like, it was Dr. Fate and the Flash. He's like, I can't remember what it was. Was it this? It's like, no, it was Dr. Fate and the Flash. And he was like, oh, it was Dr. Fate. But what book was it? I was like, in the Flash, because they looked gorgeous because you were drawing them. And I just feel like he, it, for him, it was always a paycheck. So if he remembers, it's going to be a glorious podcast. But I believe... Uh, he, like him working on books is the way we do pos podcasts. When it's over, we have a brain dump. And I do believe that's what he did when he was done with the project. But J like JLI, he'll remember because he has stuff to, bu to, bu uh, 
to like talk to JM and Kevin about. He's like, do we do we do this? Yeah. So he remembers that more. But the little stuff, I have a feeling it's gonna be like pulling teeth. It'll be interesting. I'm excited to see what the podcast brings, you know? Right. So I have it subscribed to my YouTube channel. I watch it on my 70-inch. I get to see that big logo (laughs) statue in the background. Did you ring the bell so you get notifications? Uh, No, I didn't because I'll just check. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'll go on YouTube and check if there's any new uh, things. And I have them on my Facebook, and when they pop up, I see it. Because basically, I'm not going to watch. Like, if that comes out at noon and I'm at work, I don't. I'll just come home, and when I'm home, I'll put it on the TV. You know what I mean? Like, I'll wait until gotcha. I'm at home to do whatever. So it's not like it's time sensitive for me. Yeah, I hear you. Where you're at work at home, if you have time and something pops up, you're like, oh, between Super Secret Science, I'm just going to listen to this. Well, I'm doing something wherever. It's like, nah, when I get right, home, you're elbow deep in icing. Yes, yes, right. now you got it. So Yeah, you know, you can't just drop everything for a podcast. I understand. No, you can't. That's you, that's not me. But right. that being said, I guess I have my my first podcast that isn't revenge. <laughs> I didn't want to uh reveal that to anyone. That's between Yes, that's, that's I'll just put that out there and, and let it lay. Okay. Um so how after listening to your first podcast for enjoyment, how was it? It was it was good. It was like not like amazing. Like I liked the subject, but like I said, there was some technical issues, like you said, and then the cutaway where I was like, did I miss something? But the monkey story is hysterical. Mm-hmm. The monkey story is legit hysterical. So I was like, I, 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 you know, like let's get there. Let's let them find their feet. If anybody's somebody I want to uh, listen to, it's him. So I, you know. That's the best I can come up with, but I know you're happy that I'm full fledged podcast listener. And yeah, this is how it starts. It's a single spark, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, there's a podcast about this, and there's a podcast about that," and then you're Mister Podcast. I the only podcasts I listen to are Keith's and At Odds. Those are the only two. That's it. Yeah. Well, I think those are the only two. Well, and that's the thing. You live the best podcast. Uh, yes. which is our Patreon shows, specifically this past week's uh, Previewing the Past. Yeah, what was that, a four-hour extravaganza? <laughs> I think the edited final pot was three hours and 35 minutes. I, I was like, because you put up the, uh, the, the, the chunk of it for free? Well, no, that's a new thing that um, Patreon does. Oh, okay. Did yeah, you know? so when you put up a podcast behind your paywall or whatever... You could pick, um, it defaults to five minutes that you get a five minute preview, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you could choose that preview to be as little or as much as you want it to be. Right. Um, plus can you pick where it's from or no, I, that, so that I don't know. Um, maybe I think if I look at this here, yeah, so you could pick where it from, like you could pick like however big of a chunk you want it to be from wherever you want it to be, and actually, oh, cool. and actually, because it's new information, you could only do thirty minutes. Okay, because uh, I will say, to, you know, it defaults to five minutes, right? Right, because I went to the to the site when it popped up. I, you know, I, I, uh, what do you call it? I uh, retweeted it from the Twitter and I saw, I was like, Oh, well, why is this here that it's able to be listened to? I didn't understand, you know, because yeah. it should be behind the paywall. And I clicked the button and I thought it was four minutes and I thought it was four hours and 50. It was four hour, four minutes and 52 seconds. I thought it was four hours and 52 minutes. And I was like, after we talked, I was like, that seems about right. <laughs> so, but I was just curious. No, this, but it was a good one, though. Um, yep. It's like every one that we do, it's like, oh, this was my favorite. Oh, that was my favorite. Oh, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but, yeah, definitely go sign up for the Patreon. Um, you know, go check out a preview of the things. You know, right? So now that, the, like, now that this is a new option with the preview of things, mm-hmm. um, I might, like, take better notes and say, like, ooh, the preview is going to be, like, this part of the show or that much of the show or whatever it is. Any but, parody part of the, the Patreon. Yes, yes. I think next time specifically I'm going to make notes. So I release the part where we talk about parody and spoof comics is what we release for free. 
Right. Unless there's something that we think is like, you know, a hook, you know, but that yeah. seems to be the go to. Right. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Thanks. You know, thanks for supporting us all the time. Thanks for listening to us. And, you know, I wanted to be clear. We like Keith Giffen. Oh, I'm a big fan. I have to actually see if uh, I could find that picture and send it to you real quick. Mm-hmm. We've sent it out before. Right. But I have it on my phone. So, but all right. All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, this was Longbox Heroes After Dark 439. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you all here next week. You're listening to the soon-to-be-named network, the Lamborghini of Podcast Networks.